We've heard it time and time again that people riding too hard on their bikes are too easy. Uh, this is certainly the case with many of my new clients who are either new to cycling and training and new to the power meter or have come to me via other coaches or coaching groups, right? One of the things that I do for my clients are video reviews, okay? So I do tons of these. I do uh, workout reviews, workout previews, plan reviews, plan reviews, uh, week, everything, you know, so we talk about a lot of things. One of the great things about the videos is that it helps to visualize this data, okay? Um, I'm not the inventor of this method. It's fairly common for coaches as a way to communicate online, especially in this era of COVID and just where we are today. The world gives us so many, you know, uh, pieces of technology that we can communicate far beyond um, just email or phone, um, you know. So this is one of the things that I do. So one of the, the charts that I was uh, working on yesterday, it, it goes really to the heart of so much of my coaching, okay? So this comes from Andrew Coggins training and raising using, uh, training and racing using a power meter an introduction back in 2003. So this is not the book. This is an article that he wrote as an introduction. And in this article, it's it's fantastic. Read it, right? He has this fantastic chart, right? About all of the adaptations resulting from training um in specific zones. And for this particular presentation that I'm making for this particular client, we wanna talk about zone one, right? So when I look at his 180 days that he just did, right? When I look at his last 180 days, where is he spending most of his time? Zone one. So I want to make the case to him that we want to take his zone one time, all this time that he's spending in zone one, and we want to push it over to zone two. We want to strategically place it in three, four, five, and six. But one of the ways that we can dramatically increase his fitness is simply by moving all of that time from zone one into zone two. So if the, at the end of 80 days or 180 days, if we can get him looking much more like this, then he will have spent much more productive time on the bike. So basically, I just have that message for my client, right? We need to move him from spending so much time in zone one and move him over to zone two. It's not as easy as you think. Uh, it's route selection. It's keeping on the pedals. It's all this great stuff. Now, by no means um, am I a uh, guy that's just reading all these old articles, right? This is a, a theme that's very common in the coach of coaches himself, Tim Cusick. So when you watch his videos, his webinars, his presentations, things of that nature, that time in zone one is a constant theme of his, right? And sure enough, as we look at my clients, as we look at our clients here in Pro 13, we see over and over again that this is a common problem and that, you know, we look at it, we take it seriously. We're like, will this time in zone one, is that going to benefit your cycling? Is that going to be the most productive use of your time, right? Well, what's great about this chart is that, you know, we can see that it is not the most productive use of our time. So we have to build a strategy, when to use zone one and then when to use the other zones. But keeping on the pedals, pedaling on descents, pedaling downhill, that's a crucial piece of the puzzle. So thanks so much and uh, yeah, pedal not harder, pedal not 
easier, but pedal right in that endurance zone two.